how did you get to where you are? How did you get to 341 podcasts? Okay, that's the question I would ask you. It's like, how did you get to 341? Who was the person who made the difference? Because there's somebody out there that made a difference in that 341. That's a lot of podcasts. I've done podcasts with people who have done 20, 40, not many who have done 1,000, you know, not too many. 341 is like top 5%. Okay, so why does Ken get to 341 podcasts? What is it? That story right there is compelling evidence that this mentor or this person that he sort of had in the Rolodex of his brain actually mattered. Hey, everybody, I'm Ken Newhouse, and I'm going to welcome you to the Get Clients Now podcast, the show where high growth consultants and professionals come to access the newest and most effective methods and systems for online marketing, advanced sales and persuasive communication strategies, and automated marketing funnels. And if you're wondering if the Get Clients Now podcast can help you get more high value clients, enjoy more sales, build a massive tribe, and make more money, you're absolutely going to love this show. Newhouse's work completely blows everything else that we've ever done with Google out of the water. I have been looking for a way to grow my presence online. And what I've viewed from Newhouse's work was something that certainly is faster than anything I've seen before. He says he's gonna do something and he does it. He does it in the time frame that he says he's gonna do it in. It's exciting when you talk about the results that you're gonna get and you can believe his word because he follows it up with action. The Newhouse is direct, he's to the point. He tells you what's on his mind and he backs his words up. From what I know now, from working with him, he's passionate about his work and he backs it up 100%. What I like best is you offer something that no one else has out there, which is a pretty comprehensive approach about marketing a system. If somebody asks me should they use a new house's team, absolutely, because you're gonna get the important information that you need very, very quickly. Um, on the internet, on the different marketing techniques, I've never experienced anything like this. I would definitely recommend Ken Newhouse for someone who's serious about growing their business. I think that your results based on the numbers would at least double the sales in a very short time frame. Hey everybody, Ken Newhouse here from KenNewhouse.com and I want to welcome you back to the Get Clients Now podcast where the one size fits all marketing model is dumb, the client centric business model is king, and top business owners share strategies that have helped their brand gain acceptance, achieve significance, and win in the marketplace so you can build your tribe with certainty. I want to remind you that MailChimp is now supporting the Get Clients Now podcast. With MailChimp, you'll find all your marketing needs in one place. Bring your audience data, marketing channels, and insights together so you can reach your goals faster. With MailChimp, you can promote your business across email, social, landing pages, postcards, and more, all from a single platform. Today is episode number 341 of the Get Clients Now podcast, and today I've got an amazing, awesome surprise for you, because on today's episode, Dr. Kevin Hogan, one of the world's leading experts in persuasion and body language, is going to be sharing at least a half dozen or more methods to get you clients as he reveals several of the most effective, most powerful persuasion strategies he's ever discovered, and several of those discoveries he's made just within the last 12 months. Now, as you're going to hear on the show, Dr. Kevin's made several amazing new discoveries in the field of persuasion and influence, which he's made over the course of traveling around the globe, I think maybe, I don't know, seven or eight times in the last 24 months, which is absolutely insane. (laughs) But uh, the guy's in demand and is a keynote speaker and trainer. And as everybody knows, he is without rival in the field of teaching ethical persuasion for business and persuasion-based methods to get you clients for literally dozens and dozens of industries over the past 20 plus years. Now, in today's show, Dr. Hogan's going to reveal the one persuasion strategy that never fails. If you're like me and if you're like my most successful clients and members, you're always on the lookout for methods to get you clients. And I promise you, I guarantee you that today you're going to be absolutely thrilled and delighted with what he has for you. Now, I've been a student of Tony Robbins, Dan Kennedy, Bob Cialdini, and about every top rated marketing and copywriting expert you can name. Many of them no longer with us. Some of them have actually gone on like Eugene Swartz and some others. But Dr. Kevin Hogan was my first, my very first teacher, the very first person who taught me anything about persuasion, ethical persuasion. And I can say without question that the strategies that I've learned from him and the methods he taught me for getting clients are still being used in my marketing and persuasion toolkit today. Now, the information he gave during the interview was so compelling that I'm actually, I'm ready to dive into the interview like right now. But before we actually welcome Dr. Hogan in on the show, let's go ahead and cover his bio first. Dr. Kevin Hogan is author of 24 books. He is best known for his international best-selling books and The Psychology of Persuasion, 
How to Persuade Others to Your Way of Thinking. By the way, it's a fabulous, fabulous book. I've read through it probably a half dozen times at a minimum. In the past decade, he's become the body language expert to the Wall Street Journal, ABC, Fox, the BBC, the New York Times, the Toronto Sun, the New York Post, and dozens of popular magazines like Forbes, Investors Business Daily, In Touch, First for Women, Success, and Cosmopolitan. Dr. Hogan has taught persuasion and influence at the University of St. Thomas Management Center and is a frequent media guest. Articles by and about Dr. Hogan have appeared in the Harvard Business Review, New York Magazine, Sales Guru, Success, Men's Health, Red Book, Women's Health, Office Pro, Selling Power, and hundreds of other publications. He was recently featured in a half dozen magazines, including Benefit, World Business Class, and W. Prost in Poland. Now, I could continue and continue and continue with his bio, but I think that is more than enough to demonstrate the fact that this guy is a world-class expert. And in fact, he stands shoulder to shoulder with any persuasion expert on the planet. And with that, let's go ahead and welcome Dr. Kevin Hogan on the show. And I know you're absolutely going to love what he has for you today. I'm totally excited. This was a fabulous interview. Let's roll. Okay, everybody, this is Ken Newhouse, your host, and with us today is a very, very special guest. In fact, Dr. Hogan is one of the first people who ever taught me the uh, the science and art of persuasion, but Dr. Hogan, on behalf of myself, and this is this is the second time you've been on the show, but on behalf of myself and members of the Get Clients Now Nation, definitely want to welcome you back to the show. It is really, really a pleasure to have you today. Ken, thank you. It is great to be here. It was fun talking with you about uh, two years ago. When I was overseas in uh, in Europe, and uh, now I'm coming to you from South America today. So, <laughs> yes, Doctor Hogan, if you if you, if you try to pin this guy down, he's uh, <laughs> he's speaking and traveling all around the globe. I wonder how many frequent flyer miles that you have. Probably uh, like a bazillion, I'm sure at this point. So what? <laughs> so if you could catch us up to um, one of the things I want to talk about today specifically is the article that I read that you wrote is just. You write a lot of really good quality stuff, but this one really jumped out at me, and I really wanted to uh, to introduce this to uh, to the nation because it's just that good, and it's the number one persuasion strategy that never fails, or the one persuasion strategy that never fails, but catch us up to speed before we start. What's been going on over the last, say, 12 months or so with you and your business, and I know you travel a lot and speak a lot. I do. I've traveled a lot. Speak. Those, those are true stories right there, so we'll skip that part. Um, did some ph- philanthropy work over in Poland this year uh, for Christmas raised a lot of money for some kids with disabilities, severe disabilities, and uh, was really proud and pleased with how many of my friends and family, people on Facebook, everybody came through, and we raised a lot of money to help a lot of people. That was the highlight of the year for last year, for sure. Nice. Chris broadcast, it was it was super. So uh, that was great. Right now, we just released um, a success course. I've never done one. I've always hedged against this, uh, like, you know, because, like, success is such a it's such a soft sounding word, like how do you define that? So I figured, you know what, let's just define it and let's show people what really works, why people ultimately fail, and what is actually going to make a difference. How is it that you get to live the life that you want? You told me you're going to be taking us some vacation time with family this week, uh, coming up here right away. And you know, a lot of people can't make that choice. They have to like put in two weeks ahead notice or four weeks, you know, six, eight weeks, and then you can do it. But when, when things go pretty well in life, when you really work hard and you have your Episode 341. Yes. yes. <laughs> this, is, this is wonderful. And that gives you the right and the opportunity to to share that time with family and friends. So congratulations, by the way. Thank you. And uh, so the success course is this huge, massive video course that we just put out, downloadable video. Really excited about it. It's, very, it's going great and very happy. And right now, I'm um, starting working on my next persuasion book. So that's a good thing too. And it's ironic that you talk about the number one persuasion strategy because exegetical persuasion, which is a basically exegetical is a biblical term for scholars in the yes. Bible. Yeah. Exegesis means you're not putting into, like there's no fake news. We're not putting anything out there. We're taking stuff like out of, I'm taking stuff out of a person and seeing what they want in a very cool way. And allowing that person to simply say, oh my gosh, I think I just decided on what I want to do. And because you work with so many people in the helping professions, uh, it's actually ideal for your, your audience. And that's very cool too. Yeah, actually I just did, uh, just worked on an episode where I talked about, actually I was doing a webinar 
I'm just, my brain is scrambled right now with all the things going on. Just worked on an, on a webinar. And in the webinar, I talked about the internal decision-making process versus the external decision-making process. So I think this will probably dovetail. And I had no idea this will probably dovetail um, with, uh, with, with the topic perfectly. And certainly some point throughout the show or at the end of the show or whenever you want to, um, why don't you do this? Give us a link to that now. Is It, it is for sale now, correct? Correct. How do, how do we get that? Because I, I definitely want to, you know, I like I said, your stuff was the first stuff that influenced me and it's super high quality stuff. And to be fair, um, you know, you run your business how you want, but I think you're underpriced. I think your stuff is worth a lot more than you charge for it compared to some of the other stuff I buy, like from Kern or anybody else. But definitely, um, how do we get a hold of your stuff? Uh, for the success algorithm course, uh, just uh, kevinhogan.com forward slash success hyphen algorithm. Okay. And that'll that'll get everybody there. And then you also have like a web store on your site? We do. It's store.kevinhogan.com. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and we'll mention this again, and then I'll put that stuff in the show notes. And guys, I'll just give you this. Uh, I don't do this very often, but when I do, um, it's because I believe wholeheartedly. So if you buy Dr. Kevin Hogan's course, and I don't remember what the course costs, but you got me on video and you got me on audio. If you buy it, use it, you're going to either be able to say this was the most incredible best investment in a persuasion course that you've ever made. And if you can't say that, I will reimburse you for the course. I'll buy it from you. So you guys have that on record. It's that good. And I can tell you that without even seeing his new material, that it's that good because he has never, ever once let me down. It's always been unbelievably just multiples of what I expected. And so uh, I'm excited to see that. But Dr. Kevin, what's what really led you to be, you know, to took you in the direction that you're going now with with your business and the new book and things like that, what what's on the horizon for you? You said you're working on a success course. What led you to want to create that success course? What was it about? Uh, the topic? success course. You know, it's, years ago, I, I listened and loved listening to Napoleon Hill, for example. And I had, I had everything he ever put on audio. I actually have the very little video that was out there with him on it. And it was, it was very inspirational to me. And at the time, it was very representative of uh, the new wave of thinking and sort of what what's going to help people um, accomplish what they want. And I really focus on achievement as opposed to like this general generic term of success. So when I, when, when you, I think of your listener and your audience member, it's like they want results. And that's one of the reasons you asked me to talk today was about the persuasion strategy, which is right. one little tiny piece, pretty cool piece, by the way. It is. Persuasion, pretty neat. Um, nobody's ever done it before, which is nice. And uh, I like that. But the success course is like that, except for on a massive scale. And uh, it is a big 10-week course where I actually coach people. And that's one of the reasons your your uh, guarantee is fairly safe there because I actually work with people until, you know, and uh, we've had such a great track record over the years with our inner circle group. And I needed to hear, here's the secret. I needed something because I'm traveling so much. The last time I talked to you, Bulgaria. This time, South America. Okay, so... I needed something that I could actually do on the road because I don't have the time in the United States right now to always end up in Las Vegas for our inner circle meetings. So we're sort of shifting, we're, we're, we're making a shift, giving people um, the success course sort of at the beginning of the inner circle group and then allowing them to work with me more by telephone as opposed to the larger groups that we have in Vegas. And uh, I miss Vegas. I miss being in the States, but I'm having a blast traveling and things are going good. So. That sort of the was the the way it's like okay I have a challenge we have a great system that's working inner circle is amazing but now it's like I have other choices I have people I like to see on the road and traveling and so how are we going to make that work for everybody and make it work a little bit better than what we had before which was pretty doggone good all by itself so that's that was the genesis of the whole project sweet sweet so let's talk about the the persuasion strategy and this again when I saw the number one persuasion persuasion strategy that always works. What's the difference when we talk about status quo? I want you to talk about status quo versus change. And I know there's there's a big dynamic that's occurring there and it's important. And I think a lot of people overlook that. But so if you could touch on that for just a few minutes, if you could. Yeah, you know, the the for sure, this is really super important. If, if your audience get this, that nobody's ever told them this before. Nobody's ever shared this. People are very afraid of change from the status quo. We all know that, right? And everybody's talked on your show. I'm sure you've had somebody talk about comfort zones and things like that. Okay, so cool. So all that's great. But let's just think about status quo for a second. What does that really mean? It's like, oh, I don't want to make any changes. Well, we know there's only two things that happen when you don't change. Either A, entropy is going to happen, which means things sort of dissolve and pixelate right before your very eyes. So 
the insurance agent, to use something that is not maybe your audience, the insurance agent has 100% of his business that he has right now. And then one year from now, he'll have 90%. And after two years, if he does no new business, he'll have 81%. And after three years, he'll have about 72%. And all the way down to zero. So when there's no change in the status quo, we really aren't staying the same. We're experiencing entropy. Essentially, we're just vanishing into thin air right before everyone else's eyes. So when your client doesn't want to change, it's really important that they eventually, when you communicate with them, you have to share with them. They have to share with you, actually, to make it perfect. They have to share with you the concept that if I don't change, things are only going to get worse. Change, of course, is terrifying. It's like change, however, is the only stable commodity that we have. For example, just think about this week. You know, last week in the markets, now we're, this is all time dated in t- 10 years from now, nobody will remember the coronavirus for anything. But it's a big virus that's happening now, the same thing as SARS 10 years ago, Ebola 20 years ago, and all these others. But basically, we're, it changed us instantaneously like that. And people who were prepared for change, people who had put money away and took care of their, their finances and everything, they were stable. So they have stability now because they took care and prepared for the challenge. We had no idea what the black swan was going to be, but everybody knows that about every 10 years, give or take, we have a major challenge, at least in the free world, the, the, the free world being you know everybody who can hear this uh, today. Right. So. So the deal is this, when, when, when we're communicating, and I would, and I really believe that my product service, Kevin, is the best for you out of all the options and possibilities out there, then I really should allow you to tell me like what the challenges that you have with the status quo are. Like what's, and by the way, tell me all the good stuff too. Like what's the great stuff about life right now? Tell me all the cool stuff. But then I want to know what the challenges about the status quo are. And it's really important that you and I and our audience out there is always thinking about our clients, our customers, our patients. What the heck is it that is so great about the status quo? What do we want to really keep for them if possible? Because it's going to take change to actually get there. Everybody from Michael Masterson to Jay Abraham to myself, probably you too, we've all mentioned that whatever got you here is not going to keep you here. Whatever got you here is not going to keep you here. And that's because of entropy. Things just sort of go away. The old CD programs uh, now are shifting over to uh, audio files and and downloadable video, right? And remember when there was 8-track tapes? 8-track what? If you're 40 years old, you don't even know what an 8-track is. It was a tape that we had in the car that stopped four times in the, you know, as you switched over. You know, you could listen to songs and they stop in the middle of the song. You know, you're singing a song and you had to stop for four seconds while it switches tracks. We actually listen to those things, and now we don't even know what they are anymore. There were DVDs, and we still sell DVDs and still use them, but now, of course, we watch Netflix and and buy things and downloadable video. So the concept is is that as you think about your client, don't just think about them today, and don't just think about what's good for them today, because what's good good for them today is not really necessarily what's going to be there in a year. We might have totally different um, ways to help somebody a year out. So our, our factor mental factor is always to be thinking, how can I help this person? Not just for today, but going forward in time, like that fourth dimensional piece going forward. How do I help them not be stuck with the eight track tapes at the end of the day? Okay. How can I actually help them convince me that change is good for them? And hopefully I'll have this a solution or the solution for them. Not always, by the way, it doesn't always work out that way. You don't always have the best answer. I don't always have the best answer, but if I do my homework, I can usually figure out, what the best likely thing for them to have is. And so that's the beginning of exegetical persuasion. That's the square one. And so if we want to actually start to cause or affect change in the status quo for our client or our customer or our patient, is there a particular process for doing that that you've come up with that we can actually share with people today so they have a kind of a, at least the foundation from which they can start? Yeah, there is. I'd like people to write this down with an old fashioned pen and paper. Um, Let's start with something called reactance. Okay, so reactance is if you think about the guy when he comes up to your door and you're like, oh, man, that's reactance. He hasn't tried to sell you anything. You don't even know. It could be a Girl Scout asking for two bucks, right, For for a thing of cookies, right? But whatever it is. You're like, oh, no, it just kills you. You're like, I don't want to answer the door. It's going to it's going to be terrible and evil and I don't want to deal with the person. So that's reactance. And that's the fear that somebody's going to manipulate us. Somebody's going to take advantage of us. Somebody's going to take away a freedom that we have. 
That's the very first thing that every single persuader, every influencer, every doctor, every every salesperson, every teacher has to understand is long before you get to what you want to teach the kid, long before you what you want to do to help the, the patient get out of pain, there's a lot of stuff that happens before that that has like we got to take care of that first. Reactance is the number one problem we have because they don't want to talk to us. They they're, they feel safe if they don't talk to us. If I don't have to talk to Kev, I don't have to worry about buying something or doing something that he says. If, I, if he tells me to do it, I'll probably get stuck doing it. So oh, I don't want to talk to Kev today. All right. So that's the first thing. Reactance. We've got to get over the fear of manipulation. How do you do that? The easiest way is to let the person come in and say, I get it. If I were you, I would be skeptical. That's where I would start. You should be skeptical. If you're not skeptical, you're crazy. You live in a world of fake news and, and facts that are this flim, this big and fake news that's this big. So it's okay. Be skeptical. Ask questions. Demand to want to know how you know that what I say is correct. Don't do business with me if you don't think I'm going to be valuable for it. Really hard to fight that. It's like, um, okay, that sounds sensible. So that's how we get rid of reactions. Allow the person's feelings you to get them. It's like, I get it. You don't want to talk to anybody. It's okay. Number two is resistance. Resistance is when I am going to share a message with you, when I'm going to share knowledge with you, you're going to go, oh, you know what? I don't like that. And people are always like, oh, but people are intelligent. Or they'll be willing to accept the opposite opinion. If you're a Republican, there's no way that you're impressed with the Democratic primaries. It just happened again 10 years from now. We just had Democratic primaries this week, California and a whole bunch of other places. And if you're a Democrat, you really don't care about Donald Trump and all of this stuff. Again, 10 years ago, he was our president back in these days. Okay. And he was quite a character too. Now, here's the thing. I really don't care what happens for these folks. I hope they all have a fun year. I'll be in South America and Europe and all of traveling the world while everybody fights and struggles back home. But here's the deal. Resistance is real. And so I can sit there and say, you know, I, I do like one thing about Trump. The fact is our markets have been amazing. Not good, but amazing in this period. Yep. It is impossible to argue that. It's not possible to argue because we have seen the most amazing stock market in history for the last two years, bar nothing, bar not Obama, who did a good job too, but bar nobody. And then on the other side of the equation, the Democrats have rightly pointed out that things like walls are sort of crazy. Now, my girlfriend happens to be a conservative, lives down here in Chile, and she's like, yeah, but Kevin, you have to understand that you know those walls really do keep out a lot of bad people out of the United States. And I said, you know what? You are absolutely correct. And they do. And that's a very good thing. However, just on the other side of the equation, you also keep on a lot of really good people. You know, hard to argue with either side. So right. resistance means I have to get what it is their thinking process is. Okay. I have to understand what it is they already believe, whatever they think about, whatever it is I do. So if I'm a doctor, uh, you know, a chiropractor, for example, if I'm a chiropractor, what is it that's like, I heard good stuff, but I heard bad stuff. You know, it's like, so... Like, here's the thing. You've probably heard about bad salespeople, bad real estate agents, bad investment aid advisors. God knows I have. And, you know, or whatever the deal is. But and you should talk about like if, if I, uh, what, uh, your audience, as I recall, is 50 percent about a third chiropractic, right? Is that correct? About 40 percent dentists, about 25, 20, 25. 20 to 25% uh, chiropractors, and then the rest are coaches and consultants, and then a, like a, a, a minor brick and mortar, small business, mom and pop crowd that, that, uh, that's that been listening to the show. So a lot of professionals. For uh, sure. So, yeah. Okay, so dental is a really great uh, place for people to be. So we got a lot of wonderful doctors out there in dentistry, and yet they face pain. That is the number one deal, right? Pain is the thing. It's like, I don't want to go to the dentist. I really don't. You know, but really, if we, we can reframe that and say, well, you know, here's the deal. You might want to go to the dentist, get your teeth cleaned, get them taken care of so you don't have to deal with the pain later. That's the, always the whole thing. It's like people, it's okay to, to capture their fear and to put it right here in front of them and say, I get it. I got that too. I'm not big on pain. If I don't have to have it, I don't want it either. So that's resistance. And resistance is a whole book. By the way, there's books out there. Dr. Eric Knowles, one of our good friends. Um, from our, our boot camps that we do. Dr. Eric Knowles, University of Arkansas, he's written the best book on resistance of anybody out there in the world. Resistance to persuasion. Fabulous. I learned so much. We've had him come to boot camp. After I read his work, 
I, I just like said, Eric, can I grab like this and this and this and make it understandable for human beings that don't have university PhDs? You know, can, can we just, he's like, sure, take it. Let me, you know, and we put him on stage, finally brought him down and had him teach everybody about resistance. Everybody should check that book out. So that's worth looking at. Okay, so that's resistance. Okay, so now we've got, now once we take care of these two R's, big R's, reactance and resistance, now we have an open table and the person is no longer terrified to talk to Kevin. Now it's okay to talk to me. They know that I'm going to try to get them to do the best thing that's going to help them the most. And I'm going to have them do that by asking them to tell me what those things are. So okay. I'll pause there for a second. Okay. And so one of the things that you wrote in your uh, in your blog post, you talked about the four types of communication that can affect change very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. can, we, can we talk about that for a few minutes? You bet. Um, I sort of call this transformational messaging to give it a really cool title, something that people might remember. Right. Transfer, transformational messaging is basically taking, taking these four key ideas and using them forever. So number one, first thing I want people to do is as you're talking to your client, so whatever your business is makes no difference. You're a coach. Say somebody's a coach. It's like, what is the disadvantage of where you're at right now? Okay. What's the disadvantage? All right. I don't want to claim to know what, what, what's going on in this person's life. You know, it's like, well, I'm having troubles. Most of them are with family. Oh, most of them are with family. That's where I want to start then. So tell me what's going on with family. In fact, I would argue and have many times live that if you fix family, whatever's going on in the family, you fix their business. And if you fix the family issues, the person is much better at business. They make much more money. They have much more mental stability every single day dealing with business day to day. Every coach that I know focuses too quickly on the business aspect and ignores the family, ignores the friends, ignores the people that they go to for 16 hours a day and not just the eight hours a day. So if you're a coach, be thinking about this. Don't just listen for the business challenges a person is working with you for. For example, think about like what's the family issues. And if you're working with people for life coaching or something like that, just flip it now. Think, what are they doing for business? Because if business is down, if they hate their job, if they hate their boss, if they don't like these people, all of these things they take home with them to the wife, the kids, the children. And you can't let that go at the office door. It doesn't go like that. We're angry. We talk about it at the dinner table. We get into arguments about it. Sometimes even the husband will say, but honey, don't worry about it. You know, he probably had a bad day. The worst thing you can say to somebody on planet Earth, he probably had a bad day. What about me? Okay, what about me? So what's the disadvantage of the status quo? Once they tell me, well, you know what? It's not perfect. I'll say, what else? And what else is a great phrase? Okay, it's a great phrase. So in other words, what, what's going on right now in life that's not perfect? What else? And what else? And what else? Now, to balance this afterwards, I do want to know factually what's going on that's really well, because we don't want to dink around with the things that are going well. You've got a great relationship with your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Great. Let's keep it there and let's not monkey with success. So can I ask you, can I ask you just a quick segue question in there real quick? And then I want to keep you on track. So if we're, if we're digging about what's not going well for them, we want to maybe start with that, but we want to end on the note if we're in this sequence of what's going right for them so that they don't enter into the next phase of questioning or interaction with us with a negative mindset or am I Yeah, I really I really like to have as much just like you're an interviewer and your job is to keep me straight and on, on track. As as a as a person who my job is to get audiences to all at the same time like figure out the same end result at the same time. All right. It's like juggling cats, I'm sure. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So now now it's like, okay, because I have to hit basically everybody's button is and say, you know, you probably think, you probably have considered, you probably looked at this, you probably thought about this, you probably worry about this. Like I tell everybody, let me guess, you worry about the way that you're going to change how, how money is going to come into your life next year, because it's going to be different than it was this year. Every single person knows this is a fact. It's just a fact. That's how life is. You're probably concerned about the health of someone in your family. Who is that person? For example, I'll ask the person to think from the uh, from the front of the stage. You can ask this audience this question. Somebody's always sick in our family. Somebody's always unhealthy. Somebody's always in the hospital. Somebody always is going to run through challenges. And if we realize these are the human condition issues, then we never run over and we never forget about empathy. We never forget about the fact that, you know what? We're all going through stuff today. We're yeah. all going through hard times. It's like 
you know, we want, and we want to show the person, make sure they get that we understand, we love them, we care about them. And we want to show, like, like, I get what you're experiencing. I know that you're going through pain. You know, I lost somebody I loved yesterday. Actually, a good friend of my mom's died today. It's like, oh, no. and wonderful person. Thank you. And, and Janine was wonderful. God bless her. And she'll now get up there. So, and, uh, but, but it was, it was tough to hear that, but it's, it's like that story is in my family today. It's like, it's all around. And it's really important that we all get like that people are going through challenges, pains. And when they see that, when they understand that we really get it, they change how they listen to us. Now they like, Oh, you understand that somebody cared like that, that Kevin actually cares about this. So there's things that people experience that are common. The, so I'd like to start on disadvantages. What's problematic right now? What's problematic? By the way, it just says my internet connection connection is unstable. I'm really glad that it doesn't have something that refers to mental state. That's fine. <laughs> just so you guys know out there. It doesn't say that on my end, so you're good. <laughs> now, so yes, I'd like to start out in the negative and then in the positive. And here's the thing. In, in any persuasion and communication, we don't want to just talk about positive rah-rah things, nor do we want to just touch on fear and pain. We want to give people a movie. We know factually from research, tons of research, if you ask people questions and ask them to share their movie with you, their wins, their losses, their fears, their triumphs, this is what causes people to connect with us. We actually connect really well with people that we have a little, like, talk on it, I love Kev, but boy, he can be irritating when he talks about that. That's my client for life. That's my client for life because I didn't just like pretend that everything was perfect. So number two, after we've talked about the disadvantages and some pessimism about the status quo, like what's gonna happen? Like if we don't make any changes today, what's gonna go wrong? Like if you don't go back to the dentist next week or next month or next year or two years from now, what's generally going to happen to those people? How challenging is it going to be? Okay, you don't have to go. But if you don't go, what happens? Okay, it's kind of going to suck. It's like, you know, the teeth are going to look bad and you're going to have, you know, all kinds of root issues and crown. Oh my God, it's going to suck. So we, we want to have people tell us like the, the pessimism. What happens if we keep doing the status quo stuff? Next, and by the way, we don't have to use the word status quo with the way things are going now. Right. Okay. All right. Just so everybody thinks, I don't, I use the word status quo, but you don't need to. Everybody else doesn't have to. They can if it's appropriate. Okay. All right. So next up, number two, what's the advantage of change? It's like, if you do want to take the time today and do something with me, so you're, I'm your coach again, if you are going to use me as a coach and if you're going to hire me for a year or two years or whatever the period is going to be, like, why would you do that? Why would you commit to that? What is it? Actually, in our application form for our, for our inner circle group, we like to ask people three different ways at three different times. Why do you want to work with Kevin Hogan? Why? Like, what is the upside? What do you get out of it? How do you know? And and here's the thing. I want people to convince themselves and me that it's the best thing for them. And the more that people write about, okay, so here's what Kevin Hogan can do for me. And here's what I think it's going to do for me. And here's how I feel about it. It does accomplishes two goals. First of all, it, I can see the person has convinced themselves because if, if I'm not convinced that they're not going to do good work and that they're going to go out and let you don't me want push to. them along, that's it. They're not going to be my great story for next year. Right. They're not going to be my rags to riches story. I want that person to be a rags to riches story. They, so it's like, I want them to do better. Tell me what is going to be the advantage of change. What's the advantage of working with me, of buying my product, my service, whatever it is. So that's two. And this is super important that they do a detailed event, like what else, what else, what else, what else. Okay. What else is again one of the great questions? What else? What else do you get out of it? How far should we? How far should we take that out? The what else? How far should we take that? Well, you know, it's interesting because people never give you the best reason first. They give you like reason number seventeen, and they're and they're like something that's really safe. Like, so what would be an advantage of working with Kevin Hope? Well, he did okay with books, and I'm writing a book, so maybe I'll do pretty well too. Okay, great. That's number one. Okay, but it's really number seventeen. I want to hear something that's a little more impressive than that. You know, I want to hear, I want to hear this. As soon as I hear this, you know, if I work with Kevin, I know that he understands business because he's worked with so many different people. And I know that if he can help these people with this businesses or the government in Poland or the Catholic church or who else, ever else he's actually been invited to work with who had nothing to do with him to begin with, I can't imagine that my little problem here, just my life and my family is going to be more than he can't help me with. Now I'm sold. Now I'm sold. 
And now when I'm sold, the chances are pretty good they'll be sold too. Right. So we've had this two-way communication that breaks down. So as soon as you're compelled and convinced, like that's the one right there. Now I think we have each other. You know, it's like they have me, I have them. They're my next success story. And from my, from their perspective, I'm the person who's going to be their story. If I wouldn't have worked with Kevin Hogan, this wouldn't have happened. As soon as I know they have that story to tell, I'm good to go. And that's where I'm ready. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. And then the third thing is advantages are not the same as optimism. Advantages are not the same as optimism. All right. Now, optimism, we just talked about pessimism, right? The pessimism of the status quo. People who are only optimistic usually end up getting hit by trains that they didn't think were going to cross the railroad tracks. You know, they were going to cross the railroad tracks and that they thought the train would stop, and it didn't. So pessimism is really important. It's very important that we teach people how to be pessimistic intellectually. It's like, let's talk about those pessimistic pieces, but then we want to get to the optimistic pieces. So why do you think you can improve even though you haven't until now? Like, what have you done right? Like, what have you done right when somebody worked with you? Like as a baseball coach or a football coach or a basketball coach or a swimming coach. Like, when did you do good with a coach? Well, actually, I did do pretty well with my swimming coach. Now, what did he do or she do that made you so good at swimming? How did you get to where you are? How did you get to 341 podcasts? Okay, that's the question I would ask you. It's like, how did you get to 341? Who was the person who made the difference? Because there's somebody out there that made a difference in that 341. That's a lot of podcasts. I've done podcasts with people who have done 20, 40, not many who have done 1,000. You know, not too many. 341 is like top 5%. Okay, so why does Ken get to 341 podcasts? What is it? That story right there is compelling evidence that that this mentor or this person that he sort of had in the Rolodex of his brain actually mattered. And it's like it drove a person forward. I always have a few people in my mind all the time. Elsa Meldridge, my, my mentor, and th there's a few other people that matter in life for family and friends that I just need to be proud of. It's like, I got it. And it's like, if everything falls apart elsewhere, if these three guys are proud of me, I'm good to go. Yeah. Okay. And and this, whether they're, they're people that I talk to every day in real life or once a month on the phone or whether they're family, whoever it is, if I know that these people, would, they really want to see me do good, they want to see us do the right thing, best thing, helping, that's where we want to get our optimism for. I'm optimistic because when I think about Elson, I just get stuff done. And I do. And I write the books and I make sure that everybody around the world reads them and understands. And then there's stories that they tell about Kevin Hogan. I love hearing gossip about me. I love it. Kev, you know what happened? I did this and it worked. I can't believe it, but I did $17,000 last week. That's more than I made last year. Stories like that right. just makes you, makes you feel good, right? All right, that's going to go ahead and wrap up the first part of the interview I did with Dr. Kevin Hogan, world-renowned persuasion and body language expert. We'll be picking back up with more methods to get you clients in the next episode, which will be the second half of the interview with Dr. Kevin Hogan. See you then. Our objective with this podcast is to help you and your business stand out in the marketplace by crystallizing your messaging, marketing, and communications. On behalf of the whole Ken Newhouse team, thanks for listening.